one. Okay, so let's officially kick this evening off. Um, this is Ripon College, our, our session tonight is on student activities and student life. Uh, I'm Jill Cardinal. I am the campus event coordinator and, and assistant director. Um, I've worked with some of you in the past or heard your names or talked to you. And I'm joined by Sarah Van Steenbergen. <laughs> And Sarah is our student uh, activities director. Um, and I'm gonna leave it to her to talk about what her department does. And as I said to those of you entering earlier, uh, feel free to use the chat or Q&A to ask questions or just speak up and you can have your camera on if you wish. So with that, um, Sarah, I'm gonna turn things over to you and um, get things rolling here with some information, okay? Right on, thanks, Jill. Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for being here tonight. Uh, as Jill said, my name is Sarah Van Steenbergen. Uh, I'm the Director of Student Activities and Orientation at the college. I've been in this role for about two and a half years, uh, and I'm actually an alum of the college class of 2012 as well. So I can come at this conversation from both a little bit of an antiquated student perspective, uh, and then also as, a, as a, an employee of the college and somebody really intricately connected to student life on on campus i'm going to share my screen uh here so that you can kind of get a sense of how we're going to spend our time for the rest of the session i'm also going to open up the chat window on my screen here so at any point while i'm talking if you've got a question you want to ask or you want to toss in your perspective on anything that i'm talking about the chat is yours you're also absolutely welcome to unmute yourself and and interrupt me uh and and come off camera if you want to chat like whatever feels good in your hearts works for me uh while we're while we're hanging out tonight um so quick overview of the stuff we're going to talk about my office is the office of student activities and orientation and it's got a lot of irons in the fire uh we we handle a lot of different stuff as it connects to enrichment and involvement on the Ripon College campus. So I'm gonna give you a very brief overview of all of the things in that bulleted list uh, from our student organization structure and how our student government is managed to participating in fraternity and sorority life on our campus. Uh, I'm gonna to touch briefly on the Wilmore Center, our athletic and recreation facility, as well as our campus recreation or intramural program. Uh, and then briefly hit on some community service opportunities, break transportation and give you an overview of what's up ahead for you in in your orientation and welcome week transition to college process and then at the end there will be time for any questions you have about any involvement opportunities that i either did talk about or stuff you're excited about that i didn't mention uh so to to get the ball rolling here the crux of what i do uh connects to our student organizations we've got more than 40 student organizations and actually right now there are four other student organizations in development. I have different students reaching out with really cool ideas about things that they're excited about that they want to generate more excitement about on campus. And that's really what student organizations are for. It's about finding people who care about what you care about so that you can care about it together uh, and frankly be supplied resources and opportunities to bring those conversations, bring that energy to campus in really, really cool ways. Uh, there's also no rule book about what a student organization needs to be right like you need to have an advisor and you need to be approved by the student senate but beyond that it, we don't put a lot of roadblocks on this because we want it to be whatever the students who are excited about that topic want it to be and we have organizations that range the full gamut of topics right we have media organizations like our student programming council and our radio station WRPN. So if you want to like get into studio recording and build a, a, a radio broadcast, you can do that through WRPN. If you want to join the cheer club or the dance team, uh, as, as that picture shows, you can do that. Whether you've danced before or not, they will teach you how to dance. Uh, our equestrian team, same thing. If you've never touched a horse in your life, but you wanna learn how to ride a horse, you can join the equestrian club and they will teach you how to ride a horse. You might not compete in the equestrian club like competition level yet, uh, but give it time, right? You have four years while you're here and that could be, that could be where your trajectory goes. 
Uh, we've got organizations that focus on different cultural emphases. So our Black Student Union, La Unida, our, our Hispanic and Latinx organization, our Asian Student Association, all of those are meant to both create unifying spaces for people who identify in those ways and also create learning opportunities for those who have not experienced those identities before and really blend sort of the community of Ripon in, in, in a more intimate way. Um, we've got political organizations, our college Republicans and our college Democrats do a lot of really interesting, thoughtful work around election seasons. And frankly, we're coming up on an election season in the fall. So this is going to be a really interesting time to get involved in those organizations. Um, we've got just kind of random organizations. I will, I will be fully transparent. Our most popular and successful student organization right now is the Ripon College Paranormal Investigators. Uh, there's a storage room in the in the office across the hallway from mine with, I want to say, ten or fifteen thousand dollars of ghost hunting equipment uh, that they have been Historic. funded. <laughs> They have had that funded through the student government uh, and I bought it for them because they asked me to and they got approval to get it and they take that equipment around to campus facilities. They also go off campus to locations where there might be paranormal activity and find it. And, and if that's something you're excited about, you can join one of the 150 students out of our 800 student campus who is connected to the Rubin College Paranormal oh, Investigators. It's wild. And so that's like, a crazy number. Isn't that wild? <laughs> uh, and so I, it, you know, when I say there are no rules with student organizations, obviously I'm being a little glib, but whatever you're excited about, you can find a space for that here. And if that space doesn't already exist, we want to make sure that it's easy for you to create it. Um, and through the process of engaging with these student organizations, you're developing programming skills because it turns out going from an idea of an event to an actual event that people attend and have fun at, there's a lot of work and, and planning that goes into that. And you're going to gain those skills through your involvement in these orgs. You're going to gain leadership opportunities. You're going to gain connections to alums of the college who were also super excited about that thing when they were here. Um, our, our Black Student Union chapter existed on the college in the 60s and there are still alums around who want to come back and have conversations with the members of BSU here today uh, and there's just there's just really great opportunity to build connections across the the bounds of Ripon College through your involvement in student orgs. As I move on to the student government piece I'd love it if anybody who's interested wanted to toss out a student organization in the chat that you're involved in in your current life uh, and if there's a natural connection point that I can make here as we as we go through the night, I will absolutely do that. So I talked about student government a couple of different times while I was talking about student orgs. We have the Ripon College Student Senate, which is a branch of the shared governance of the college. Uh, the Student Senate is a, a legitimate policy making, budget managing governance function of Ripon College, and that's by design. We want students to have a voice in what their experience looks like and how, frankly, their money is spent. Every student contributes $300 a year to the student activities fee, and that money is 100% controlled by the student government. I don't get to tell them how to spend that money except for certain prohibited items, right? Uh, and even, even in some cases, those things are negotiable. Uh, and so th that money really lives in the hands of students by design to make sure that it is, that students are cultivating their own environment and have the resources to do that in a really authentic, purposeful way. Um, so we have our student senate, and then we also have our student judiciary board, which is a, a sort of branch of the student government that helps with conduct response. When, when shenanigans happen and there needs to be a community response, students have a voice in what that looks like. And so you're like taking care of your community in a really hands-on way. And, and that kind of student autonomy is a hallmark of the Ripon experience and a really powerful thing to be involved in. Uh, to join either of these organizations, there are representatives from every single class on the Student Senate. So right away in fall semester, in August or September, uh, the student senate is going to reach out to your class, the class of 2026, and say, who wants to be the class of 2026 senator? And that will be those students' voice on all of the things that the Senate does for the rest of the year, including how that money gets spent. Um, 
We also have representation from student organizations. So again, you can kind of double dip with where your where your emphasis lies within the student governance process. Uh, because if you're a part of BSU and you're also the class senator, you get your voice heard twice. Uh, and so the system kind of encourages lots of engagement and lots of involvement to make sure that the folks who, who are paying attention and caring and showing up are the ones who get to make the decisions. Um, and when I, when I talk about a lot of money, right, $300 per 800 students, uh, they typically start the year with in, incoming money or revenue around $250,000. And then they also have a pool of rolled over money called the one fund that is fully theirs to, to hang on to. So at the end of every fiscal year, any money that was theirs to begin with that wasn't spent gets put back into that pot. And all of that kind of accumulates and is, is how they get to enrich the campus environment. This year, because of two years of low spending, just because we were in a pandemic and folks couldn't really travel, um, this year the One Fund started at $318,000, which is just an aggressive amount of money. Uh, and, and they have done some truly phenomenal things with those funds. Uh, and you know, it probably won't be that aggressively high all the time, but we can anticipate continued high spending in that in that way. And I really am excited about the opportunities that exist for the students who get engaged uh, in in deciding how that money gets spent and the ramifications of, of where that money can go. Our Greek community is a really vibrant part of campus. We just wrapped up our uh, uh, recruitment cycle. We're a deferred recruitment campus here at Ripon, which means that we do our, our the bulk of our Greek recruitment or membership invitation processes uh, in the spring semester. And that's by design. We wanna make sure that new students have their feet on the ground and and you know a good semesters worth of rip and experience before they take on the require or the, the expectations and and um, responsibilities of joining a, a fraternity or sorority. We also want to make sure you have time to get to know these communities before you make the lifelong commitment of joining them. Uh, and and so having that full semester of opportunity to explore the different chapters and the men and women who are part of them and really get to understand their values and, and what organizations they do community service work for and what they care about. Um, that's, that's important to the, the process of, of joining a chapter here at, Col at Ripon College. So we have seven organizations at Ripon. We have three national all women's organizations. Alpha Chi Omega, Alpha Delta Pi, and Kappa Delta. And then we have four fraternities. Three of them are national organizations. Uh, those are Phi Delta Theta, Theta Chi, and Sigma Chi. And then we also have a local fraternity. Uh, Phi Kappa Pi or Merriman is our local all men's fraternity. And that just, they function in very similar ways. It just means that, you know, if you're a, a Theta Chi or a, a Kappa Delta at Ripon College, there are Theta Chi's and Kappa Delta's at other colleges. There are no other Merriman. There are no other Phi Kappa Pi's because they are all right here and their entire alumni structure is just from Ripon College. Um, there are so many benefits to joining these organizations. Uh, same kinds of leadership development opportunities that I saw and talked about with student organizations exist in, in the Greek world. There are also astronomically huge alumni connections, right? Uh, a member of an organization has that on her, his or her resume for their entire life. Uh, and, and right, if the person that you're interviewing for the job down the road with is also a member of your chapter, there you immediately have a shared common bond. Um, and, and that bond extends not just in alumni networks and, and things like that, but also with the people that are right there on campus with you and part of that organization with you. Um, the brothers and sisters that you form when and you bond with when when you're in one of those organizations those relationships are different from any kind of student organization relationship that i've ever seen um and it's it's a really meaningful place and then again as i said each organization has a philanthropic partner uh, and so for example our kappa delta chapter works really closely with our our local girl scout troops doing women's focused leadership development in that space 
our Alpha Chi Omega sorority does a lot of work around domestic violence and, and um, prevention work and awareness work around the issues related to domestic violence and sexual assault. And then our Alpha Delta Pi chapter, uh, actually all Alpha Delta Pi chapters across the country partner with the Ronald McDonald House. And so our women go down to Madison and do volunteer hours at the Ronald McDonald House there all the time. Um, there's just, it, it's, it's, it's about making your individual experience better and, and joining that community, but then also using that togetherness and that chapter relationship to improve the campus community and something bigger than the campus community all at the same time. And so if that's exciting to you, uh, Greek life is definitely a great option. Our Wilmore Center is a phenomenal location for whether whether you designate yourself as an athlete or an athletic human or not. Um, and so there's, there's recreation spaces, there's hangout spaces, there's one of our three dining centers. The, the Wilmore Center is just one of the most vibrant spaces on campus. Um, and I can really quickly uh, give you a tour of what the Wilmore Center looks like if you haven't seen it yourself. I don't think this video has audio. So we're probably, this is just a walking tour. That's what the front desk looks like. You can check out a ton of equipment from the front desk. So all of that is available. And then again, where it says drink and hustle there on the side, that's the micro mart. That's one of our three dining facilities. Fully stocked weight room, uh, really, really excellent space to, I'm not athletic, so I'm winging this part here a little bit, but the weight room is fully stocked at a really great facility for that kind of activity. Uh, and then we're heading upstairs to the cardio balcony. Again, fully stocked, really excellent quality machines. We also have our two studios, um, both have mirrors in them. So if you're a dancer and you're looking for a place to dance, that's up, that's available to you. We have instructor led classes in these spaces um, that are free for students to use. All of this is free for students to use because you are, you are already contributing to the maintenance of this space through what you pay to the college. Um, and then naturally, oh, we're going down to the other bigger studio. This is where even more uh, checkout equipment is and then bigger classes are held. Um, and then, I'm gonna hop ahead here. Talked about the cardio balcony already, plenty of different types of machines. So whatever you're looking for, the Wilmore Center has it in terms of getting your sweat on. Uh, I would add, it's not like crowded where you can't get a machine right. either. It's again, it's not just for athletes, everybody. Community members have memberships too. So I, it's not like you have to worry about reserving a machine or the weight room is only for football guys. They have their times that they're there. Right. So. Yep. And then, you know, you'll learn that, right? I, I think any student who is not part of a, a, a of an athletic team, but is a frequent user of the Wilmore Center, they know the times to go when the, the sports teams have their lift periods and when it'll be a little more chill and you can fit that into your schedule. They're also, the Wilmore Center is open from 5 a.m. to 10 p.m. on most days of the week. And so it's really designed to be accessible to whatever your schedule ends up looking like. Um, you might also have a classroom in the Wilmore. Um, we have two really, really functional, comfy classes or classrooms in that space. So a lot of classes get assigned down there. And then of course, a huge, beautiful gymnasium, NCAA bas basketball and volleyball regulated courts. Uh, you could, you could, if you and your friends just want to play a game of pig, you can do that. Go, go play pig in the fancy basketball gym and feel like a big shot. You know, all of that is available to you. Um, and then the atrium again is a really great place to hang out. So the Wilmore Center is a, a fancy, fancy space on campus. We want people to know about it. We want people to feel like they can go there. Um, there's things that you can check out to do. Uh, and, and it's really just a really wonderful space on campus. It's also the home of our campus recreation program. 
which is something I can speak a little more intelligently about. So Campus Recreation uh, was a rebrand, re words are hard, rebrand from our intramurals program. And the reason we switched it from camp or from intramurals to campus recreation is because it's not just intramural sports, right? There's so many different things going on within this program. And it's really designed to be fun recreational activity for whatever kind of interest you're looking at. So I, I have a picture of the fall schedule and the so far spring schedule. There will be a second half of the spring schedule that gets added probably around spring break time. Um, but right, indoor volleyball, four on four volleyball is a, a type of athleticism that I cannot do. I can play in a cornhole tournament, heck yeah. And, and that's the, the full range of opportunity there is really intentional and by design. We want it to feel like everybody has an opportunity. And if you are a banging ping pong player, we have an opportunity for you to compete uh, in a ping pong league and, and showcase that part of your skill have that fun with your friends in a different way, in a competitive way. Um, and it, again, totally free. Evening and weekend participation. There are day events and leagues. So if you're not looking to do a full league, but you see a, a Super Smash Brothers tournament on some random Saturday and you want to get involved in that, great. There's no there's no wrong answer for uh, participation in this. And the the colleague of ours who runs this, her name is Maddie Coster. She's the building manager for the Wilmore Center. She is always looking for new ideas. And so if you're really excited about some kind of intramural-esque, competition-esque thing that isn't currently being offered, go talk to Maddie. She wants to know that and she will make it happen. Uh, and then the entire, the entire system is run through a website called I Am Leagues. So you'll be able to see, that's where I pulled this screen grab from. You, you'll be able to see scoreboards and, and table rankings and it, it gets very intense, especially during basketball season, uh, <laughs> which is currently ongoing. The intramural or the campus direct basketball season uh, gets, gets spicy in a big way. I think we should add horseshoes, Sarah. Oh, let's tell Maddie. You can, I mean, you can see the, the Super Smash right. Brothers tournament down there at the bottom. They're playing flag football. That picture of the gal on the rock there, they, they annually take a trip to Devil's Lake during our Welcome Week program. And they want to get more into that kind of day trip mentality. And so all of this is fair game. Um, and we want, we want folks to feel like they can participate in that, whether doing a league sport is within your comfort zone or not. We'll talk a little bit about community service. So there are lots of different ways to give back to the Ripon community, the surrounding area uh, through being a, a member of, of Ripon College. So we do organize some service trips. Obviously COVID took the air out of that balloon a little bit, but we're looking to bring that back. Uh, you can see in that first picture there, we took a group of students to the Horicon Marsh uh, and they were doing some mulching on some paths for, for the nature center there. Lots of opportunities to do local volunteering. My office has, gosh, I wanna say 65 different local contacts of, of places where we have sent students before um, who are looking to get volunteer hours for, for whatever reason, right? Um, and we, we maintain and curate that list so that if a student shows up and says, hey, I'm looking to get involved outside of just this area, we have a way to direct them. And I can ask them, you know, what are you excited about? And point them to four or five different things that align with those excitements. We host blood drives pretty frequently, or at least we did pre-COVID. That's again, also starting to come back now. Um, and so basically every 72 days, you're allowed to give blood and about that frequently, we'll host a blood drive on campus so that people who are regular blood donors working with either the Red Cross or the Community Blood Center, um, you'll have an opportunity to, to continue that here. We also host, uh, my office doesn't host this, it's actually part of the Career Professional Development Office now, but it's called Rally's Closet and it's a um, free for use professional clothing space. So if you need a suit coat for an interview, because you've got a, a internship opportunity that you're really excited about, and that's not something that is in your Ripping College closet, you can go to the Rally's Closet and utilize professional clothing for free. Um, and you can also then donate items to that if, if uh, you have spares and want to give back in that way. 
We do a lot of collections and craft projects from a service perspective. Uh, so that pile of bags is actually a several bags of bags. Uh, we just put out bins and said, put your plastic bags here. Uh, Cause we know that those don't decompose well. And so it's, it's a green initiative. And then we also donate those to local food banks and, and charity organizations that people go in and collect things from so that they don't have to spend their money getting more bags and folks can find a green way to get rid of theirs. Um, we also do things like make dog toys for the local animal shelter, quick stop and serve style situations so that like you don't have to give up a full day if you don't have a full day to give, but you can give back in a little way. We wanna make as, as with all of these things, we wanna make them as accessible to any student situation as possible. Actually, right behind me on the floor of my office uh, is a box of winter clothing and cash donations that a group of fraternity men uh, just decided to, to solicit donations for, to donate to Afghan refugees who uh, landed at Fort McCoy in, in uh, the early or late part of the fall. And so local impact, really grassroots stuff. If you're excited about something from a service angle, we want to know about that and we want to help you facilitate that. Break transportation. Ripon is not always the easiest place in the world to get to, especially if you live far away. Uh, and so we provide at the start and end of each semester, as well as around our fall and winter break or fall, winter and spring breaks, uh, my office provides for a, a low cost to students uh, airport transportation. So we will solicit about a month before the, the break is about to start. We'll offer up a sign-up sheet for a small fee. You can get either a one-way or a round trip trip to a, a local airport, either Milwaukee or Chicago, depending on the number of students who sign up for any particular shuttle. It might be a student driver driving you in a college van. Might be a full bus if, if a lot of people are flying out of O'Hare uh, to go on spring break, right? And then if you sign up for that round trip, We'll, we'll bring you back to campus on a specific time, and then you can book your travel around when those shuttles are happening. That's available to any student. Again, small fee just because buses are expensive. And in COVID, we had to, we had to specifically rely on public transportation to get folks there just to ensure distancing. And so that is available if you live far away, or if it's just easier to have your parents pick you up at the General Mitchell Airport in Milwaukee, then have somebody come up and get you from Rip. My last point before I stop talking and answer some questions, I want to give you some details about summer orientation and welcome week. So uh, I've been talking about the student activities part of my title a lot. Second half is orientation. Uh, and so a big focus of my job is making sure that new students land well when they get here, uh, build good connections as soon as they get to campus, uh, and frankly, know the information that they need to start their college experience successfully. Uh, and that's not a one day project. That takes a lot of time. There's a lot of layered information that you are you don't even know right now that you need to know. And that's okay. Uh, you haven't started that process yet. And so we will we will handle it. We will take care of you. We will make sure that at various stages of your transition process to Ripon, we're getting you the information you need to be most successful as you're as you're landing here. So, summer orientation for the 2022 summer uh, for the class of 2026 will be on June 27th and 28th, or June 28th and 29th. It's an overnight program. You'll pick one of those two to come to. Uh, it is a mandatory program for all new students uh, because of how essential it is to the success of our entering class. So if you're hearing me say those dates and that's freaking you out, I'm going to encourage you to start reaching out to your admission counselor now to talk about what alternatives could exist for you because it is a mandatory requirement of all new students. Through the course of that day and a half, you're going to do a lot of different things. We keep we keep folks moving. We keep you busy, uh, and this is a this is both for you and any parents or family or supporters who are you know cheering you on from behind as you're starting college. We have programs for both uh, during during this window. And for students who are participating in this program, you're going to have an academic advising and course registration appointment with your assigned academic advisor. So you will leave the summer orientation process fully enrolled for fall semester. Uh, and that is a guarantee that we make for all, all new students. And obviously, uh, we 
place a high priority on that because we know that you want to get enrolled in those classes too. You're also going to hear a lot of different campus resource presentations so that you start learning about the, the types of support structures that the college has to make sure that you can be successful. You're going to hear from Brenda in the Franzian Center for, for academic success. You're going to hear from Maria in the Center for Diversity and Inclusion, because we know how important those offices are to the success of our students. And we want you to see those faces, make those real connections, and plant the seeds early that those are those are spaces that you get to occupy and take advantage of. And then also we're going to do some, we're, we're going to have fun. We're going to build some community. You're going to get to know new classmates. You're going to be assigned a roommate, just like you'll be assigned a roommate for fall semester. Uh, and you're gonna have orientation committee members who are upperclassmen heroes who support the transition process into the college for all new students there to help you feel comfortable and answer some questions in an authentic way and lead games of mafia or trivia or whatever feels good for that moment. Uh, Cause we want this to be fun. We don't just want it to be us talking at you. We want you to start having little nuggets of that college experience that you're going to have once you get here full time. Once you're done with summer orientation and, and fully enrolled in fall semester, you'll get a little bit of a break. And then uh, the transition experience picks right back up on move-in day. This year, move-in day is going to be Saturday, August 27th. Uh, and so that'll be the, the official start of our welcome week. Welcome week runs through the first full week of college classes. Um, if you are not a fall athlete, you will arrive on August 27th, and then our returning students who are not fall athletes, they don't arrive until the 28th. So you've got campus mostly to yourself for that first Friday night. The orientation committee will have lots of exciting programming opportunities, again, developing that comfort, building some of those connections right off the front, getting you acclimated to campus so that you know where things are. Uh, if you don't feel like on the first day of classes, you don't know where to go. That's a terrible feeling and we don't want anybody to have that. Um, and then obviously throughout the week, there'll be a lot of different involvement opportunities, a lot of different introductory activities to the college from both student angles and different faculty and, and departmental levels. They want you to engage with them right away. And so there's a lot in that schedule to help make sure that you're getting connected. And you'll start your college career. It's the first week of classes. Uh, and so we'll, we'll have lots of really great engagement with faculty for you throughout that time. That was so much. That was so much. I'm going to stop talking for a little bit uh, and activate my mouse again so I can stop sharing my screen. Um, who has questions? You can either unmute or toss them in the chat. Shine. You know, we are here to answer any question. She, uh, Sarah gave you quite a lot of information, so we want you to digest it. But uh, anything related to admission, enrollment, activities, life on campus, and my dog will continue to. What is your dog's back. name? Jill? My dog's name is Luna, and um, yeah, she's really kind of annoying me right now. <laughs> oh no. I've been feeding her Cheerios to try to stop her. <laughs> Amazing. Did anybody want to ask about something that they're involved in now? Uh, that so I, they, yep, I have a question about when fall athletes will move in. Great, uh, great question, Angela. And that's going to determine, uh, be determined by your coach yeah. and the sport. Um, I can tell you just from experience, like football moves in usually, uh, is it about two weeks early, maybe like, you know, really? mid August. Um, but then some other sports will move into. So if you are an athlete, uh, a fall athlete, then you will have that information from your coach um, sometime, uh, you know, soonish this spring or early summer. Yeah. I also uh, what, really, oh, go ahead, Mitchell. Oh, okay. Um, what kind of classes would be in the Wilmore Center? That's a great hmm. question. Uh, I mean, Exercise obviously- Exercise science? Yeah, programs that are directly connected to what goes on down there, pretty common. So any sport management class you could have down there, mm -hmm. uh, exercise science classes are going to typically be down there. If you're getting like any sort of coaching certification, mm -hmm. those folks are going to be down there. Mm -hmm. And then there's also like, they're just really nice classrooms. So I mm -hmm. know that classes in our Catalyst curriculum are sometimes held in the Walmart. Mm -hmm. Um 
When, and if you haven't been on campus, I would just like to address, so uh, we referred to kind of upper and lower campus. So lower <laughs> campus is um, the areas with the Wilmore Center and the Rodman Fine Arts Center. Uh, and both of those, obviously you can um, you know understand what their purpose is, but if you do have art classes or you're in choir or band, those are gonna be down in Rodman. And just for um, perspective then too, it probably is about a 10 minute walk from let's say your residence hall to the Wilmore or the Rodman Center. Um, we literally have one road you have to cross on campus and that's the road that would connect you to Wilmore and Rodman. So, um, you know, we're, we're spread out to the extent, but yet it's very walkable if you haven't been on campus. And uh, again, it's not a far way to, um, to get down to that part. And I can chime in here and attest, I was a double major in English and theater. And for all my, most of my humanities English -y classes, we're mm -hmm. up on upper campus. All of my theater classes right. were down on lower campus. Mm -hmm. uh, and I didn't bring a car to campus until spring of my sophomore year. And so you just, mm -hmm. you get used to the walk. It's not that, it's not no. that far. Right. Uh, and all of our classes are spaced out so that if a student has a class in Wilmore and then immediately has a class on upper campus, you have plenty of time to get there. Wow. Right. There's time to do that. Um, I, as I'm thinking ahead, you might be asking about a car on campus. Um, so yes, right now, any student can bring a vehicle to campus. Um, it's going to be a fee yearly of, I believe, 150 to 400 in that range. Yep. Uh, the closer you are to your living residence hall, the more expensive it would be. And then my other point um, always is if you are going to have a car, do not wait until August to try to get a parking spot. So be sure that you do that, you know, in June or July, you shouldn't have a problem getting a, a, vehicle, a spot. But if you do wait till the day of classes, then I, I can't promise you're going to get a space. So 100%. And just another note on that point, upperclassmen do get to reserve their spaces before new students do. And so you're probably not going to get a spot right next to like right outside of your residence hall. It's pretty unlikely because those spots will go faster. Those are also the more expensive spots because we know that they're more convenient. And so it's, 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 uh, it's more expensive to have the more convenient option. Right. Um, but we absolutely, as Jill said, as soon as you do summer orientation, you'll have access to the system you need to book that parking permit. Mm -hmm. um, and we've got folks working all year round to make sure that parking permit applications are processed. So earlier the also better. you don't need a car either uh you know as i said campus is relatively uh you know it's a smaller area so you do not need a car by any means downtown uh, is a highlight of ripon i believe as well you're talking two three blocks from campus that you can get down to uh, in the coffee shop a barbecue joint the movie theater uh thrift stores other fun stores so um again you do not need to have a vehicle on campus other questions, thoughts, concerns? Give you like 30 seconds, but as I'm waiting again for questions, I do want to um, express my thanks to Sarah uh, for being here tonight with us and sharing all that good information. Uh, I know it always helps me to hear things and um, learn more and more all the time. And hopefully you as well did, and it makes you more eager to learn more about Ripon and possibly enroll for the fall. Um, thank you for joining as you, um, uh, as I got your names down, you will be in a drawing for later in the spring. We'll do uh, some raffle items for, uh, for giveaways. So you are in that drawing one time if you came tonight. And again, there are additional Zoom sessions coming up uh, this spring. So watch for those. And there are different topics. We have financial aid, advising. I know our couple of sessions will probably have a student panel uh, at some point. Um, so watch for those just to learn more. We want to be here to uh, help you and meet you where you are and in your home. Sometimes it works best. So. All right, with that, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thanks again, Sarah. And I hope that we see you all soon and be well. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.